Hi everyone, it has been a quite a long time that I have uploaded any videos in my channel. So I thought of discussing the database design techniques in my today's uh, session. So whenever we design a database uh, for a particular business domain, what we do is basically we go through the business problem statement. Okay, we go through the business domain model. From that business domain model, okay, what we do is we perform the requirements gathering. Okay, usually business analysts, okay, will do the business requirements gathering. Once they gather the requirements, they will write a kind of requirements. Okay, they will write a requirement in such a way that it is helpful for the rest of the development team to perform the database design. Okay, so what is the first step when database design starts the first step when database design starts is we first draw the er diagram the entity relationship diagram okay guys i'm going to show this entity relationship diagram creation in my next video because it will take a lot of time so i have i need to work on that and uh, create a diagram for uh, any trivial example or any real world example okay so i will uh, definitely create a video on that okay so that is the first step basically you have to create a er diagram then after creating the er diagram we have to do entity to relationship mapping okay from the er diagram we basically create a structure which is called entity relationship mapping so after doing this mapping we will be basically come up with the raw tables or you can or you can see the raw entities of your business domain basically okay that is called er mapping and once er mapping is done then we going to apply this normalization process or you can call database normalization process okay so these are the three steps remember first is uh, er diagram creation and then entity to relationship mapping where we get the raw database tables and then on the second uh, steps output that is after doing a er mapping whatever raw tables we get on that we apply the normalization process in order to purify our database design so in my today's session i'm going to start with normalization so what is normalization okay normalization is a database design technique which organizes a table in a manner that reduces redundancy and dependency of data okay mark this statement guys okay what they are saying is normalization is a database design technique which organizes tables in a manner that reduces redundancy and dependency of data okay once a normalization is done properly we won't be having any redundancy in our database redundancy means saving the same data in multiple places okay and more number of times dependency means unwanted dependencies between the tables okay so that's what normalization solves the issue or the problem basically okay it divides larger tables to smaller tables and links them using relationships see the word see the statement it divides larger tables to smaller tables and links them using relationships see as i said when the database design starts there are three steps first is er diagram creation second is e entity to relationship mapping so after doing that er mapping we basically end up with the tables but those tables are not properly normalized so this is that's why they are mentioning it divides larger tables because we may end up with larger tables after applying er mapping okay so it divides larger tables to smaller tables and links them using relationships theory of data normalization in sql is still being developed further still people are working okay the data scientists are working on normalization inventing new forms basically okay for example there are discussions even on sixth normal form but however in most practical applications guys normalization achieves its best in third normal form itself so most of practical uh, application database design I, it would be recommended or it would be good that you normalize your database till third normal form okay so this is how the normalization is basically evolving first normal second normal third voice code voice code is a person who who is from ibm who basically introduced the concept of normalization okay so this is a this is the voice code normal form is also called 3.5 normal form okay so fourth normal form fifth normal form sixth but we will today concentrate only till third normal form because that will serve the purpose of normalization okay database normalization i will take an example now okay so assume i have a video library okay uh, okay which maintains a database of movies rented out basically so i have a shop 
called a uh, and i call my shop video library and where i rent out the movies basically or the cds you can say compact discs okay so without any normalization all information is stored in one table <laughs> as shown below so if i don't have any normalization okay so i applied my database design technique what i did i draw a year diagram and then i did a entity to relationship mapping and i ended up with this one table which contains all the information which is redundant which is basically dependent okay but still there is one table which is storing all the information so without any normalization this is what is going to happen see the table full names physical address movies rented salutation and category what category it belongs to okay so here you see movies rented column has multiple values now we are concentrating on normalization basically tech normalization technique so let's see how we start normalization for this raw database table so here you see movies rented column has multiple values can you see here guys movies rented pirates of the caribbean clash of the titans forgetting sarah marshall daddy's little girls okay this is basically a smell when you, you when you see this kind of database tables which are containing multiple values in a column then it is basically a bad design okay which requires a normalization basically so what we have to do we have to first apply the first normalization form okay so let's start with that what the first normalization form says okay so first normalization form rule see each table cell should contain a single value see here this table column movies rented is not adhering to first normal form because it is having multiple values okay each table shell should contain a single value each record needs to be unique but here each record is not unique okay can you see a robert phil robert phil third street 34 fifth avenue clash of titans clash of titans okay so this is the issue with this table so how we basically normalize this by applying the first normal form we first what we have to do is we have to make this table in such a form that each column should contain only single value okay and each record needs to be unique that is each record needs to be unique here okay so if i apply first normalization form okay so now my table will look something like this full name janet jones physical address okay whatever address she has movies rented see now pirates of the caribbean caribbean has its own record for janet jones again she has a rented clash of the titans also so she has one more record for this movie okay and again same for the robert phil forgetting sarah marshall and daddy's little girls so we applied first normalization form in such a way that there are no multiple values in a cell and each record is unique by the movies rented okay each record is unique so we brought our raw database oh, sorry our raw table sorry yeah the raw design table okay into first normal form by doing by removing all multiple values in the database table columns basically or adhering to each table cell should contain a single value and then each record must be unique so we achieved that so before we proceed let's understand a few things now okay what is a key okay in database in database management systems or in dbms domain we usually come up with this word or we usually encounter this word key so what is this key a key is a value used to identify a record in a table uniquely a key could be a single column or combination of multiple columns okay so a key is basically one of the table column okay one of the table column which is used to locate the record uniquely okay so that's what they are saying and this key can be a single column so i can make this full name as a unique okay I can use only this full name uh, column value as a key or I can make use of multiple columns like physical address as well as full name to identify the records uniquely okay so if I make use of full name as a key then what will happen Robert Phil can you see there are two entries with Robert Phil okay with the same name basically but if you see their addresses their addresses are different so in this scenario i can't make use of this full name as my key but 
if I combine it with physical address then I can uniquely identify these records okay just for your uh, uh, understanding purpose I explained with this example so a key is a value used to identify a record in a table uniquely a key should be single column or combination of multiple columns note columns in a table that are not used to identify a record uniquely are called non key columns these are all non key columns guys sorry these two okay just for example so what is a primary key a primary key is a single column value used to identify a database record uniquely again we can make multiple but here with respect to uh, terminologies uh, i'm saying what is a primary key a primary key will be usually usually or in more 99 percent of scenarios a primary key is a single column value used to identify a database record uniquely okay it has following attributes a primary key cannot be null a primary key value must be unique uh, the primary key values cannot be changed the primary key must be given a value when a new record is inserted always remember when it comes to database management system okay we can make use of composite keys in very very rare scenarios but a good design will always contain only single column primary key or only single primary key okay so and that key will adhere to this following attributes okay it cannot be null a primary key cannot be null a primary key value must be unique for all the record it cannot be same the primary key values cannot be changed yes once inserted they cannot be changed the primary key must be given a value when a new record is inserted so what is a composite key now a composite key is a primary key composed of multiple columns used to identify a record uniquely again very rare uh, cases in very rare cases we will use composite keys so in our database we have two people with the same name as I already explained the Robert Phil but they live in different places okay so if I would have used just a first name then I can't differentiate the records okay because name is same basically so in order to differentiate these records I have to make use of one more column called address in order to make it a composite key okay so names are common hence you need to hence you need a name as well as address to uniquely identify a record so hence we require both full name and address to identify a record uniquely this is a composite key for us okay so let's move into second normal form that is second normalization form 2nf we call it okay now what 2nf says okay in order to bring a database table into 2nf first it should be in first normalization form okay this is the prerequisite first it should be in first normalization form and then single column primary key is required this is strictly prohibited no if i want to bring my database table into second normalization form i should not have composite keys as i had already explained sometime before it is a very very rare or no scenario where your database table will compare contain a composite key as a primary key okay so see 2nf is eliminating that basically it is saying first of all your table should be in first normalization form and second thing is that the second rule says that there should be single column primary key you can't use a composite key as a primary key if you want to bring your database into second normalization form okay so it is clear that we can't move forward to make our simple database in second normalization form unless we partition the table yes we have to partition now here because I can't make use of composite key in order to identify uniquely records in this table so if you see my database design now what happened so basically this was my let me go yeah basically this was my table that was only one table okay and all these uh, full names are basically members of my library video library right so what I'm going to do is either I can call them customers or members okay so I will call them members so what I'm going to do is in order to adhere to second normalization form what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that table into two tables that is first one member table okay let's call it a member table so table one so now I'm going to introduce a key called membership ID now now I'm not going to differentiate records by full name and physical address kind of composite keys no I'm going to make use of this unique ID membership ID which is of type integer C it is unique for each and every row as we gone through the primary key definition okay and it is added whenever a new record is inserted okay and it is not null it cannot be null and once it is uh, inserted it cannot be changed also because it's primary key if you try to do any of these uh, things like uh, if you are trying to insert a null if you are trying to update a primary key value database 
management systems any database management systems they will straight away throw the error to you okay you can't make such changes to primary key column okay so now i brought my database table to second normalization form by first splitting it into a member table that is with a membership id full names physical address and then salutation then comes the second table called movies or you can call the rented movies table which i call table 2 and here you see membership id 1 okay what movie he has rented pirates of the caribbean again membership id 1 what movie he has rented clash of the titans can you see here if you see our earlier table which was a raw table see here he has rented these two movies basically okay uh, sorry she has rented these two movies that is janet jones okay so as you see here now after applying second normalization form my members are residing in a different database table with their unique ids and then the movies they have rented will be put into another database table called movies rented and if you see how the relationship is established the relationship is established using membership id okay so membership id 1 which belongs to janet jones so she has two records in my movies rented table because she has rented two movies that is pirates of the caribbean and clash of the titans and same applies for other records okay so this membership id in table 2 is a foreign key basically which references your parent table that is member table or you can call customer table okay so this is how we split these two the, our table into two tables okay and we got rid of composite primary key and also we have already put it into first normalization now we have divided our first nm table into two tables with table one and table two which is i can call member and movies rented table one contains member information and table two contains information on movies rented okay we have introduced a new column called membership id which is the primary key for table one records can be uniquely identified in table one using membership id as i have already explained it is primary key now let's go to foreign key the concept of foreign key in table two membership underscore id is the foreign key okay here also i have the same column but this serves the purpose of foreign key because this member underscore id basically references the member tables membership id okay so we are establishing a relationship so in the member table okay janet jones her membership id is one and she has rented two more so you can see two records and same for others now what is foreign key foreign key references the primary key of the another table okay always remember as uh, i shown in the previous example this membership id in movies rented table basically references the membership id of the member table okay so where was i so yeah i was here so foreign key references the primary key of another table it helps connect your tables oh we are establishing relationships in other words now what are the attributes a foreign key can have a different name from its primary key yes you can give other names also there is no hard and fast rule that you have to give membership id only but a good database design technique will always recommend us to make the name same when you are establishing uh, yeah parent child relationships okay or primary key foreign keys basically okay so well that's it it would be good to make use of the primary key column name only so a foreign key can have different name from its primary key yes that is also allowed it ensures rows in one table have corresponding rows in another sorry yeah so it ensures rows in one table have corresponding rows in another table so uh, if you see here rows in one table that is in member table the record one have its corresponding rows in other table because they are related okay so membership id one which is janet jones and she has rented two movies pirates of the caribbean and clash of the titans so corresponding rows are there okay that's it unlike the primary key they don't have to be unique most often they are okay yes because your foreign key oh sorry your child table which contains uh, foreign key it basically references your parent table so there is a possibility that your foreign key always contain it, it there is no hard and fast rule that it should contain unique values no because it is referencing your parent table so it can contain duplicate values okay so basically you are telling that this particular membership id or member has these many movies rented okay so 
no there is no uh, hard and fast uh, rule oh or you can say there is no rule that uh, the foreign key should be always unique no not like that it can contain duplicate values okay foreign keys can be null even though primary keys cannot see if your child table is not able to locate any record in your parent table then your foreign key can be null okay it is allowed your foreign key can contain a null value okay so that is how foreign keys basically behave okay so diagrammatically i would like to show how things work here see here this is membership id foreign key for my movies rented table and it is referencing my member tables membership id okay so foreign key references primary key foreign key can only have values present in primary key always remember this foreign key column should always have a value which is present in primary key table if you try to give some other value to your foreign key database management system will throw the errors okay in order to ensure the referential integrity it would have a name other than the primary key yeah that i have already explained so why do you need a foreign key again the foreign key ensures the referential integrity between related tables foreign key column can contain only values which are there in a parent table primary key column okay so this is a little background for primary key and uh, foreign keys now let's before going to the third normalization form let's understand what are transitive functional dependencies okay a transitive functional dependency is when changing a non key column might cause any of the other non key column to change okay do you understand see guys i have i have tried my level of best to make this uh, session in very simple english basically okay i have tried to make it very very simple because if i go with uh, database management system definitions or if i go with those notations right it's very hard to understand all these concepts okay because they will make use of a lot of symbolic based uh, notations like the transitive dependencies other notations it's very difficult to understand right so that's why i have made it very simple here so transitive functional dependency is when changing a non key column as i said a key which cannot be uh, sorry a column which cannot be used as a primary key is always called a non key column okay as i have already explained so transitive functional dependency is when changing a non key column might cause any of the other non key columns to change okay i will show you an example now consider the table 1 okay changing the non key column full name may change salutation can you see here now after applying first normalization form i got this table that is sorry second normalization form i got this table that's membership id full names physical address and salutation now see what happens okay if robert phil okay he is a male okay that's why salutation is mr the moment if i change robert phil by okay uh, rebecca anderson okay it will change to miss so this is called transitive dependency changing the value of a non key column that is full name okay or salutation okay make it to change other non key column value in this case if i change robert field to rebecca anderson okay the salutation will change from mr to miss this is called a transitive dependency basically okay transitive functional dependency so now let's go to the third normalization form what third normalization form says first of all first rule that it should be in second normalization form guys do remember that normalization is a kind of chaining in order to achieve second normalization form you must be in first normalization form in order to achieve third normalization form you should be in second normalization form okay uh, yeah so the rule one you should be in second normalization form and rule two there should be no transitive functional dependencies that's what i gave a little background here my table should not contain this kind of columns guys which basically makes my other non key column to change okay that is for example if i change the full name for membership id 3 if i change the full name from robert field to rebecca anderson then it makes my salutation column to change from mr to miss so this should not be there if you if you want to ensure your table is in third normalization form you must adhere 
these rules that the first rule is it should be in second normalization form and the second rule that there should be no transitive functional dependencies okay so to move our 2nf table into 3nf we again need to divide our table and just guess it guys what column may be get divided this one salutation i have to bring it into one more table now so to move our 2nf table into 3nf we again need to divide our table so how the division will happen now see member table membership id full name physical address salutation id can you see here i have created a new table called a salutation and salutation table will contain a primary key called salutation id and that salutation id will be referenced by this member table basically so let me quickly show you how it looks now table one is member table second move is rented table and third is salutation table so now see how things are properly split here okay so this is my member table okay now i have got rid of that salutation uh, from this uh, table and i have created a separate table for that and i have put it uh, into its own database table with the salutation id and the salutation okay so this way i got rid of this transitive functional dependency over here okay so well that is done now now i can call all these three tables basically or this small database is in now third normalization form okay so we have again divided our tables and created new tables which store salutation there are no transitive functional dependencies and hence our table is in third normalization form in table okay in table 3 salutation id is primary key and in table 1 salutation id is foreign key to primary key in table 3 which is salutation okay now our little example is at a level that cannot further be decomposed to attain higher forms of normalization in fact it is already in a higher normalization forms separate efforts for moving it into next level of normalization data are normally not required here okay so that's enough i think this is how we achieve the third normalization form and this is how we apply the normalization process in database design techniques okay guys i hope uh, you people understood what is this normalization okay and uh, i hope you it will help you when you people are designing your databases okay so that's it for the day thank you for listening and uh, have a nice day guys